Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the sauce BH244. This is a invisible hinge. This is in their BH series, and BH stands for barrel hinge. This is a larger barrel hinge compared to the ones that you commonly see. Same concept, they're just a bit smaller, uh, in fact. So here's what that hinge looks like. Let's take some basic dimensional properties, and then let's talk about why you might be looking at it. Overall length when the door would be in the closed position is about an inch and seven eighths. Its diameter is just shy on one inch, maybe 15 sixteenths. I have one articulated open here for you to review. That would show the door to be at uh, 180 degree and of course 90 degree. These laminated pieces of material are the hallmark of the sauce hinge which is what gives it um, its strength, its ability to carry a tremendous load, but also to be concealed. Um, so why are you looking at this hinge video? What would it be used for? Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Well, certainly you're looking at this because you want a concealed hinge as the bottom line. And a barrel hinge like this is nice uh, because it is it would be considered less work that you would go through to install a typical sauce hinge. The barrel hinges require nothing other than a round hole drilled into the door and frame. And um, that's probably what, well, probably the reason that people gravitate to them is because um, to barrel hinges from sauce is because they're very, the, generally they're very small and can be used on very thin material like cabinet doors in a, in a kitchen. Um, you get into this larger one, the BH, the 244, um, you might want that because you don't want to do the two-step process of routing on what would be, uh, you know, a sauce 200 series, something in the small 200 numbers. Um, the important thing to know about sauce generally is, uh, well, in fact, there's only one important thing to know, think of it as a, a commandment, so to speak. There's a dimension that you can't exceed when you're installing this. And um, what that means is from the pole side of the door, the installation of where you drill the hole in the edge of the door cannot exceed a specific dimension from the face of the door to the center line of that hole. That's what they call the E dimension. It can't be exceeded, otherwise the door won't open. And just recently, earlier this week, I had a client order some offset pivots from us because they had a door and a frame that they installed a concealed type hinge, not a sauce of another company. The problem is they grossly exceeded the E dimension and the door would not open to more than 20 degree or so because of the positioning of that hinge. Um, it's so far towards the pull side of the opening and that's based on, that's a result of where the vertical axis of pivot, is of pivot is located within the unit itself. So let's talk about that. So a regular hinge, you know, if this, is, if this is the regular hinge and my knuckle is the barrel, that's the vertical axis of pivoting. And the door will open, okay, around that vertical axis of pivoting. Well, with a sauce hinge, that vertical axis of pivoting is that rivet that's right there, or that pin. Well, that pin is two things. It's concealed within the thickness of the door, and it floats as you open and close the door. That isn't a static location like it would be on a hinge. That's a, a permanent, fixed, non-moving position, that vertical axis of pivoting. But because the vertical axis of pivoting is now moved inside of the thickness of the door, you're limited as to how far the door can open until the outside heel edge of the, of the door would hit um, anything that's there. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the hallmark of the, the principle of the sauce hinge, and actually all concealed hinges, meaning their vertical axis of pivoting is tucked inside of the thickness of the door. Same sort of problem that you could uh, consider on a center hung pivot because that vertical axis of pivoting is down in the center of the thickness of the door as well. The bottom line is, where you place the vertical axis of pivoting, 
just imagine in your mind a line going down through the barrels of the hinge. Whatever the type of hanging hardware it is, it has a vertical axis of pivoting. Where you place that in relationship to the door, to the frame, and mathematically, or dimensionally, I should say, in relationship to that, absolutely affects the swing of the door. Um, even if you had a butt hinge, I have some 12-inch wide butt hinges here, and the question is when you have a 12-inch wide butt hinge, here's the frame, here's the door. Okay, My vertical axis of pivoting is right here, but when I move that vertical axis of pivoting from here way out here, it absolutely affects how much margin you need between the strike jam and the edge of the door. After you get to 10 inch, then, you, then, then there's going to be a problem. 10 inch and greater. 10 inch has to probably be looked at in AutoCAD. I don't recall. Uh, I'll make a video showing all of the dimensions. When you get to 12 inch, yeah, you, you must compensate by making the door smaller or doing some other exotic means. Maybe you're going to relieve the frame, I don't know, or put an aggressive bevel on the door, which could complicate a hardware installation. So this is a barrel hinge. If you use your imagination, you can see why they call it that. Uh, made of brass. Not everything here is brass. Not 100% of the components are. Those rivets aren't brass. With the pins that are holding it. Actually, the magnet's not picking it up. There's some steel inside of here. I would imagine that the pin that goes on the inside of the hinge is, is probably made of steel. Something's picking up the magnet. Um, so I think what we'll do now is let's switch to the screen view and let's go over all of the supporting documentation. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Let's take a look at the supporting information that we have on this hinge. Let's take a look at some actual photographs first. There's the hinge itself. Side view, so to speak. The end of it. You'll notice this slice that's here. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Well, let's talk about it now. That screw there and there allows you to drive so to speak a wedge between the body of the unit and um, this outer portion to separate that, to secure it into place. Also take note of this half circle that's here. You'll see evidence of it here as well, and here as well. That will allow you to drill and countersink an additional anchoring method, should you need or like or want. That screw is, you would, ins you would insert a screw there. Screws aren't included with that. Um, so depending on the weight of the app and the application and the material that you're going into, you might want to pick up some brass uh, flathead screws to go in there. My guess would be a number six. Um, that's my guess. We'll see if the documentation tells us. Showing uh, what it might look like at 90 degree. And again, that's the vertical axis of pivoting. That thing just floats through there like that. The back side. Looking down into the hinge. Your stacked laminated plates. That's where, again, it gets all of its strength from. Pinned here, pinned here, and pinned in the center. And when I say strength, sauce hinges are notorious for being able to carry... A, a, a substantial amount of weight and in fact they have a line called their Hercules hinge that can carry an obscene amount of weight for a hinge a thousand pounds uh, at, at its extreme just another view of the unit itself nice looking hinge now extended description information here the BH244 24 millimeter drill bit that's what you're going to need for the installation we'll talk more about that in a moment um, you know, 15 sixteenths, one divided by 25.4 times 24 is 0.944, and 15 sixteenths is 0.9375. Um, you know, is that really, 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 really close? Yes, it is. It's about a 90th of an inch. Um, if I was doing this, I would be purchasing a 24 millimeter drill bit, uh, would be my opinion on that. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use the wrong size, plus it's slightly too large. Uh, just drill to the proper size and insert the hinge, is what they're saying. Light application only. Sold as each when you buy one, we'll ship you one. 
There's a reference to the E dimension, and we're going to dive into that in a moment. But quickly, it's this line from the face of the hinge, the hinge prep to the face of the door, or the frame for that matter. And that cannot be greater than 3.5 millimeter. Let's go through these four documents. Cut sheet, great overview of the BH hinges. Um, you can read all of that. I won't read that to you. Uh, but here is our table. Minimum door thickness, inch and a quarter. Oh, okay, I was way off. That's a number 10 screw. A number 10 by inch and a quarter is what they were looking for. Uh, inch and a quarter. Yeah, maybe. Depending on the thickness of your material, I mean, the body itself is one inch. This dimension is one inch. So, I'll tell you, it looks way too... Number 10 looks like, in my opinion, number 10 looks too large. Would be, would be too large, in my opinion. But that's what the factory says, so there you go. So there's our cut sheet. That's kind of what it's going to look like. Then you'll tighten those screws to secure them. And if you want to go the extra distance, you get the concept. You'll need to do a small amount of countersinking there and pre-drill that hole. One nice thing about these barrel hinges is that they're used in you know, light furniture or cabinet or even light door applications, as you see here. They can get down as thin as 7 sixteenths of, uh, of an inch thickness. They do say 15 sixteenths will work for you, but you know your mileage may vary depending on the density of what you're installing it into as well. If it's a softwood material, I would really not want to over drill it. If it's a hardwood, probably would be okay, uh, would be my guess, because it's, again, it's take a 32nd of an inch and then divide that by three. That's how little it is, but nonetheless. The next document is clearance dimensions. This is a blanket document from Sauce that pertains to all of their hinges and shows you why the E-dimension can't be exceeded. And here's, here's that concept. If you were to get any closer on the E-dimension, that small amount of clearance that's already built in is going to be violated. It'll be exceeded, and you won't, you'll find that you'll get the door open a little bit, but it's just going to hit is the bottom line. This document also simply shows different applications of material in these four columns. So if you study each of these columns, you'll get the concept of why it looks like that. And really, all they're doing here is showing different variations of how you might apply material uh, to an application. It all comes back the same way that you have to be mindful because in this example, well, the fourth column or the third column is the same thing just flipped over. Um, you know, here we're violating the E dimension. And that's going to get you to a nominal maximum of 90 degree. If you go further, there's going to be damage. And that's why that E dimension is so crucial. And it's got everything to do with the location of the vertical axis of pivoting right there. So a handy document that will help illustrate um, what we're dealing with. Um, you've, you may also have seen trim, baseboard, chair rail, mitered like this to help accommodate a requirement um, to get a door to open. Um, it's something that's also done with sauce hinges. Instructions, let's take a look. This usually comes in the package. It didn't with these. Um, but, you know, let, let's just, the template's going to give us the same information, but let's dive into it. So you have to position your center line, your C dimension. You have to do so such that you do not violate the E dimension. So it's simple. You got 35.1 millimeter. We know we've got 3.5 millimeter as your maximum E dimension. That's all you need to know. And then obviously vertically where you're going to position it. You know, another bit that would be nice, and I, I don't know that you can get a 24 millimeter Forstner bit, but a Forstner bit would be nice. F O R S T N E R. Forstner bit. Uh, the reason I say that is because yeah you may be able to get your hand on one the reason I say that is because Forstner bits create a very none of these none of these are really Forstner bits this one's a Forstner bit well not uh, Yeah, this, this would be a Forstner bit. 
flat end, cuts on the perimeter, very clean cut, extremely clean cut. I would very much recommend a Forstner bit for this type of work because of how clean of a perimeter cut you're going to get. Um, so I know I went through that quickly, but unfortunately there's, well, fortunately, there's nothing else to, to talk about. You've got your C dimension. Don't violate the E dimension maximum. You know the depth is the B dimension, 24.9, so basically an inch. And if you don't speak millimeter, I don't either, um, but I can is the bottom line. And the math on that, the way I do it is there's 25.4 millimeters per inch. So 1 divided by 25.4 times whatever you're trying to convert. And the C dimension was 35.1 times 35.1. That will put it into a decimal format, 1.381. Well, if you know the decimal well enough, you're going to know that that's basically 1 and 3 eighths. 1 and, uh, one and 3 eighths would be 1.3875. So incredibly, you know, five thousandths of an inch off. So that would work out just splendidly for you. So that's how I do it. Convert it into the decimal, then I can, you know, um, I understand what that is just because of my practice of having done it. Uh, now, the other reason to show this to you, they're showing you what the screw option looks like as well. So it would end up looking like this. Your hinge, the BH244, uh, does not have two per barrel. It only has one, as shown here. I don't believe they should be showing it four times. It should be only shown one time here. It's that simple. A dimension. B dimension. A dimension is the diameter. B is the depth. C is the center to center. D, that's the dimension that you're going to get when you bring the material parallel to each other, but that's a dimension that's just being given to you. This is what it's going to be when you do this, when you observe E and C. Okay. Now the template. The template's basically the same document in the sense that, well, here it is. Um, you know, this is what you're dealing with. 35.1 millimeters center to center. They also give it to you in imperial as well. They, where's our E dimension? Here's the E dimension. 3.5 or 9 64ths max. If exceeded, the door may bind against the jam and not open. So we gotta be careful of that. And that's what they're showing us here. Just a cabinet structure. This document's over 10 years old. It doesn't change often. That's for sure. There are documents that are half a century old for hardware that the hardware just hasn't changed. Inch and a quarter minimum door thickness. You get that concept. You won't be able to stuff it in there. You know, you're drilling basically a one inch hole. You can't get greater than 964 here, which is going to leave you less than an eighth of an inch here, basically. So that's why you're going to have a minimum thickness on that. Now, there's a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And from here, we can pull up not only all of the sauce products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as encyclopedic documents. There's a document here called the Nomograph. It's one of two. By the time you're seeing this, there'll likely be another one. The nomograph is a uh, chart to determine how many hinges you'll use based on the weight of the door. The barrel hinges don't really have a load rating like their standard hinges do. Um, so don't hang anything heavy on barrel hinges. But this nomograph allows you to, de to determine which hinge you'd use based on the width, the weight, lining those up and going to the chart and then going across that will give you how many hinges you would use for this part number up here. The 218 is very likely the most common hinge when it comes to commercial door work. You can see that this chart tops out at 500 pounds. Their Hercules style, again, tops out at 1,000 pounds or more. That nomograph will be here by the time you see this video. Then there's finally the link to the product catalog. I would encourage you to review it if you're not familiar with Sauce. It's, uh, there's more there's additional items in here beyond the sauce hinge, um, but it's an interesting look into what sauce hinges are. And you never know, this material might just 
very elegantly solve a problem that you might have in a, in a very concealed fashion. So you might want to take a look at their catalog. Uh, they have um, obviously barrel hinges. They have their traditional hinges that look like this. That might be a 220. They have clo self-closing versions of those. They have uh, power transfer versions where you can run low voltage through it. Here's that Hercules hinge, and it tops out at almost 1,100 pounds. It's just a more robust version of their standard hinge. Then here's the standard line of hinges. Page 2 carries on. They can do fire rated versions of this material. They can do stainless steel versions of this material. There's your power transfer. They can do hinges that are better for hollow metal door applications as well. Okay, Fascinating. Here's our barrel hinge. They also have these magnetic door holders. They also have a uh, template system for their traditional hinges as well um, that will make much easier work for some people on doing this. Accessories, router bits, and guides as well, reinforcements if you're doing hollow metal. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. In conclusion, if you have any questions on sauce hinges, please feel free to reach out to us. Our client bought four. They're priced and sold per hinge. So not all sauce hinges are sold and priced per hinge. Most are. Sometimes the really small ones that are carded, there's always two in there. They might be priced per card, which means two or whatever in the packaging. We can generally break those open as well. Um, any questions on the Sauce BH244 barrel hinge or any other Sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.